Okay, hi, I'm Duncan Krieger. Welcome to DefenderCast. DefenderCast is a podcast about business, property and positive thinking. So we're collaborating today with Bridging and Commercial and a lending business of mine called Tab. I've spent many years around the um, bridging industry, um, more years than I care to remind anybody. And yeah, I just thought this would be an interesting spin on rather than us having leaflets and handing out and telling everyone how great Tab is, that we would do something different. So we've done it in conjunction with Bridging and Commercial. I'm going to ask you to to briefly introduce yourself. Um, The three sort of things here are name, company, and an elevator pitch. If you've got something in you, that would be great. And I'm going to ask you to go first. Well, the the, the elevator pitch is definitely one for the chief commercial officer. Fine. Um, But to introduce myself, my name is Nick Baker, uh, head of intermediaries at Alaka Bank, the UK's newest business bank. So I'm responsible for engaging and managing our broker panel. Um, and delivering product into that panel for the benefit of SMEs. Awesome. So, so Chris Weller, Chief Commercial Officer at Alica Bank, uh, as Nick says, the UK's newest business bank. Um, we, we founded Alica on the very simple premise that we think that SMEs need the support to be empowered and we, we really believe that you know, businesses in the SME sector have suffered for a long time in, with, with banks being squeezing them into the middle from Most either definitely. the corporate side or also from taking solutions out of retail banks. Um, and we believe we can do that differently and really give them solutions that are designed specifically for SMEs. We're very early on that journey. We received our regulatory approvals in September. Uh, we are now working out in the market with our broker partners uh, and looking at how we can really bring products and services to customers as we build the business. Okay, interesting. I've got loads of questions. Um, so, Alica Bank, yep. Um, so, it's a brand new business, new banking license. So give us a course sort of um, quick whistle stop tour of what that process looks like becoming a, a bank. Yeah, I mean, it's a challenging process, one that a number of people have been through and people still continue to go through. Some there's have a, failed as well. Well, there's been some, there's, you know, it's a challenging process. And I think for all the right reasons, as you would hope, yeah. uh, both from a regulatory point of view, but also because it's important that the proposition that you put out to customers is one that really has resonance with them. Definitely. And, I, and I think both both the regulator side but also from you know our our customers and the broker partners that we've been talking to as we've been going through that that process and that journey have been really receptive to what it is we're talking to them about um, you know we don't sit here today as a as a business that's got everything we want to provide you know we are a growing business and in our, in our own right but i think the key thing for us is that you know as the market has changed you know we've built alica on the premise of being able to you know to really support those sme businesses um, we talk about you know kind of expert banking for business britain and for us that's about bringing modern digital tools into play that doesn't necessarily mean the shiniest whizziest app that's out in the marketplace it means things that are practical that work for them that give them the, you know pragmatic solutions to the, the time and day-to-day challenges they have and at the same time giving them the ability to work with relationship managers so as Alica Bank, we'll be delivering out a team of experienced relationship managers across the UK. What do your ideal customer look like then? So we've got, a, I suppose, a broad range of customers that we'll focus on, you know, we're, but, but ultimately we're there to support SME businesses and that will change over a period of time. But we're really looking at, you know, the core trading companies across the UK. Um, and it's sure. providing lending to those companies, right? Yeah, both lending and deposit pr- deposit products as well. Yeah. So, uh, so one of the key parts that we've got is the ability. Well, you to need take deposits, deposits in order to absolutely right. Lend, it's, right. Ultimately, it's about giving SMEs the option to use those cash the cash flows within the business to really drive out opportunities for them as they want to grow or develop. What's or your still. background? Uh, so, I've been working across uh, financial services for a number of years. Uh, chiefly in commercial roles, whether that be in some of the, I, I was most recently at one of the, the peer-to-peer fintech businesses, uh, previously at other businesses, also with a stint outside, but mainly across commercial roles, always with an SME focus. My passion and edge is SME businesses. So your um, experience of peer-to-peer has now shifted back into a sort of old, more old school traditional banking model. Is there a reason that you back that? Um... That's a really good question. I mean. I think one of the things that you know we uh, we certainly think is that banking isn't 
old school. Yep. Um, we think that there are some real, you know, benefits of, of the, the way, way in which banks do have banking worked, is right? old school, yeah. Uh, you know, but also the way you can deliver that to customers now has fundamentally changed yeah. within the market. I'm going to ask you about that as well. What's your background? Well, I, I think the point Chris just touched on there, which is Alec are trying to take a slightly different approach, is quite typified by my appointment. Yeah. Um, so my career lasts. 13 years. I've been at Alica for 12 months, but 13 years prior to that, I was a commercial mortgage broker. Okay. That sounds like I'm just going to say I'm a recovering commercial mortgage yeah, broker. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely superb time, worked with some great people, worked with some great lenders as well. But actually what I saw during that process was everyone talks about the SME and everyone trots out the percentage of the economy that they generate in GDP terms. Everyone trots out how many people they employ. But who's actually delivering the long-term commercial mortgage solutions that they are after? And actually, it was being a broker where <laughs> afforded you to see where those gaps were from a lending perspective. Mm. So when the Alica opportunity arose, I could see where my experience could match that gap. In addition to that, I think lenders try to put SMEs in boxes, and they yeah. also try to put brokers in boxes as well. I don't mean wooden boxes, yeah, cardboard no, boxes. Not, yeah. um, so actually, by having a broker involved in that process, we've been able to look at the build of Alica yeah. and say, how do we align more closely with how a broker, which is a change in market, which I'm sure we'll come on to, with how those brokerage firms wish to operate. I think how all, can we best all work with lenders them? are guilty of doing that. I mean, you talk about having a kind of, once the rate card gets cut into five different boxes and you have to fit in one of them, it's um, it, it becomes a problem. Okay. One of the, well, absolutely. And one of the reasons why we don't have a product guide, there's yeah. great specialist lenders in our markets. Yeah. You know, this, this room today full of them. is full of them. Yeah. And it's full of lenders that are doing really good work for property investors, property developers and SMEs. But actually, if you look at the show guide, how many are really dedicated to SMEs? And that's yeah, no not criticism. Many. No, no, you're right. No, but I mean, it's an many, opportunity for you yeah, guys. We've got, for example, one of the, the business areas we look at is what I call pure trading businesses. So I'm talking about the public and the B&B operators. There's 25,000 B&Bs in the UK. Yeah. 300,000 retail businesses. Yeah. Not all of them need a short-term lending solution. Many will. Many don't. But many yeah. want to back that family business for the next 15, 20 years and need committed capital in order to do that. Yeah. So again, taking what Alec are looking to do and perhaps some brokerage experience as well, that's how we try to deliver How many people want. are employed at the bank? Uh, we're up to around 75 people in the bank. Yeah. Um, wow. you know, and we will we'll you based? continue to grow that. Well, we're currently, we've got an office in London. We've got people around the UK who yeah. are also home-based. They're working okay. from uh, Northwest, from the West Midlands, East Great. Midlands. Um, and we're going to be opening a new site shortly outside of London as well. Um, and I think, I think you know, to Nick's point around where the market is at, you know, one of the key things we see is that you know, any, any bank, any business like ours can only play a part within the, the SME's advisory role. Yep. Um, you know, one of the reasons why we're here, um, not just talking to you, but, but at the show and Thank working you. with our partners is that you know, brokers form a fundamental part now of that advisory team that businesses, business owners, you know, people running businesses have. Um, and you know they're also really important to us, to, the, to us as a bank. Yeah. Um, you know, and form a you know really key part of how we will be able to service SMEs. You know, since since the changes that happened through the industry over the last 12 years, we've seen you know a huge rise in the number of people that are able to position themselves to support businesses with requirements. And you know, bringing somebody like like Nick in, um, you know, has been great because it's allowed us to really understand the challenges that you know both the brokerage firms themselves have in terms of the lenders they work with but also that their customers are facing. Yeah. How, how can you build a proposition yeah. that really works for them, not just yeah. yourselves? Yeah, okay, talk to me about the technology side, because I know you sort of went out of your way to say that you haven't got the shiniest app um, going, and I think if I look at the market, and I'm quite interested in this marketplace, then you can go all the way to the other side, which is just an online app bank, uh, like a Revolut, for instance, who I use. Um, they don't provide lending, they don't understand SMEs, I completely get that, um, but there is an easy way to open an account and to see your activity in real time um, with kind of flashing lights and bells and whistles, which I actually find really, really useful, having been stuck with old school banks for many, many years, tried to open a business bank account for um, a tiny little business that I just wanted to deposit my own money into, um, and but getting pushed around um, 
getting asked ridiculous questions. Yeah. I've been one extreme to the other. Um, so I'm interested. You said that there is some technology. What, what, how do you see technology playing a role yeah, in what you're I doing? I think technology technology's got a big role to play. It's not the only one. For me, it's about how technology works with people and how it works for people. Um, you know, we will develop over time in terms of the things that we bring from a technology perspective to customers. At the outset, it's, it's actually fairly, fairly limited, fairly straightforward, because what we want to ensure is that we've got an architecture, and we'll get a bit boring now, but no, the architecture no. side of what we're building gives us the Should ability... Should be boring, you're a bank. No, it's absolutely not. That's a, that, <laughs> yeah. 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 that just fell out my mouth, by the way. <laughs> but the thing for us is that, you know, what we want to do is make sure we've got that built, stable, secure operating center, which you would absolutely expect from any, yeah. any bank. Um, and then from there, it's about working with customers and also with broker partners to make sure that what we're building is hitting some of the key pain points for them. Whether that be, you know, onboarding in an easy, strict, slick way that gives you, you know, one one point of data entry yeah. multiple times. Yeah. You know, if I you're mean, coming would, back for more info, which yeah. is which is a requirement at times, yeah, so you do it easily. You're very broker focused. I mean, it's unusual, I think, for a bank to be so broker focused. Um, I, th I, I think it will become less unusual. I believe yeah, it should be less unusual absolutely. on the basis that those those are the people with the clients that require your services. Yeah. But I mean, I imagine my experience with banks is there's a kind of brick wall up against, you know, we don't deal with brokers and we don't have... Um, so that's clearly something that you've actively decided that you want to kind of recruit new business in that way. Absolutely. They, to Chris's point, they are playing that pivotal role in managing SME relationships. Agreed. Tens of thousands of RMs leaving the market. Um, thousands and thousands of branches shutting and we can plug that in part but it's a, an industry solution that's required we can plug that in part by having the technology stack that Chris talks about that can be developed over time yeah. but also having someone at the end of the phone in our team that's got 30 years experience in lending to SME owner operated businesses yeah, so you're going to want those um, customers to bank with you as in, I mean, you know, as we as we build, that's that's something we'll think about. But at the outset, absolutely not. You no. know, it's, it's important always for me that we we will play the part we can play. Yeah. And and within that, you know, we need to form a part of that. You know, that ecosystem for SMEs, which brokers play a part of. Other banks will all, always play a part of, as will a lot of the funders that you see around the room today. There's, yeah. there's a space for the right type of support at the right time. Uh, as we build, we hope to be able to cover a lot more of those those needs for businesses. Yeah. Um, you know, but at the same time, are you open for business now? We are open for business. Yeah, open, yeah. open and trading. Um, initial broker panel built. Um, inquiries have been coming in over the last three to four weeks, and are, are picking, mostly lending. Up that um, I yeah, guess you've got, got a deposit product now. Uh, we will be launching a deposit product in short. short What's that going to look like? Yeah, so we'll we'll be having we'll be having a range of different options out there. Uh, so starting in the new year, we'll be getting those out into the marketplace. And is that be, a case of listing on Money process. Supermarket and opening yeah, the we'll doors? Yeah, we'll be doing a you know, fairly, fairly typical approach to the way that we do that. You know, and pretty competitive rates that yep. allow us to you know to partly let people know that we're build open, some deposits. You know, we're we're a bank we've got full FSCS compliance so in that sense you know it's a good opportunity for businesses particularly some of those who are looking to you know to to, to take the cash that they are they are depositing and, and yeah. have a bit more access to, to a new bank the day one product types are all about that SME they're two two mortgage products essentially very straightforward so they all secure on property secure commercial mortgages so there's commercial owner occupied yeah so butchers bakers candlestick makers and Tell commercial me what that product looks well. like. so that product is a hundred thousand to two million both products a hundred thousand to two million 20-year committed terms on those products as well so yep. again playing back to my point about that long-term commitment and I think that's really important actually just on that point the amount of five-year money for owner-occupied businesses, I think, at the moment... And buy-to-lets and everything. Well, and I, I think it's outrageous, because yeah. that is not what the borrower is asking for. No. I don't actually think they know about the consequences no. of what will happen I've at the end of the I've been through those five. cycles as well, and I've had um, you know, residential buy-to-let from that west for the five-year term, get to the end, the goalpost starts moving. Well, and it's goalpost, but you're also getting a revaluation. You're going back into a legal costs, process. Yeah. You're going back into an arrangement fee process. Yeah. And you know that, that really needs an industry solution, because that is not long-term support so we're their long-term support so 20 years what 20 sort years of loan to term. values uh, ranges across the pieces you'd expect but there's two things to comment on one is for a you know an industrial a warehouse business we've got loan to values that sit well alongside the competitor set we don't operate a product guide we don't like bucketed ltv so for products. the butchers and bakers that you were talking about before yeah you're going to be somewhere between 60 and 70 percent okay. loan to value 
on the owner-occupied businesses, and yeah. this is key, and the market misses this, where there's inherent goodwill, yeah. we've actually got the ability to take that into account when we lend as so well. So you could lend 100% of the value of the property? For instance, well, I'll give you an example. Let's or say more. we've got a trading hotel that's making 200,000. Yeah. Okay, that's probably worth in the market today around 1.7 to 2 million pounds. We will take a look at the open market value, the MV1, yeah. and a red book valuation, yeah. with a check back to a VP. Like an old so Pinder's uh, a business valuation. Correct. Yeah. So you're, you're looking at, you know, if an operator has worked hard to build that goodwill, that must play part of their lending decision. Yeah, it does if you're looking at um, other assets, um, which are effectively the businesses. I mean, look, these guys, a lot of these guys don't understand that. They're not in that, that, in that market. But what, what would you be pricing those sort of 60%? Um, if you were looking at an owner-occupied, owner-occupied deal. Where they're not trying to leverage every penny of yeah. val- goodwill value they've if got. If we're looking at, let's look based on the inquiries that we've had. Okay, so if we look across those, margins range in about five and a quarter, 5.75 percent on an owner-occupied business. So we're over base. We're, we're, correct, over base rate. We're firmly and unapologetically in the space between the high street and some of the other challenges in the market. And so, okay, that for us is about pricing to risk. So our pricing model, as you'd expect for a tech-driven bank, has got thousands and thousands of data points. And that's actually about not having a product guide that's yep. bucketed with a rate on a loan to value that takes a binary approach. Yep. And that is because... It's, it's, it's difficult to argue, sorry. There to, have, yeah. that, I'm going to argue. That, <laughs> that is because we have the people in the business that have the experience yeah. to take that approach. What I'm, what I'm saying, sorry, to, to, to clarify, is that it, it's less technology driven. It can't be as well technology driven if somebody's making a decision, which I actually think is a good thing, personally. I think... You know, it was done really well uh, when the computer says no um, videos were circling yes, around so. the world. That is obviously not the way to go. Um, you can't put even two shops with the same tenants next door each other on the same high street in the same it's, category. It's superb, isn't it? So if you're looking at a trading business, one of the biggest things to consider from a risk perspective is clearly the ability of the management team. Yeah. I don't know an algorithm yet that no. can tell us the ability of a management Agreed. team. Agreed. So it's tech being an enabler for our decisions. Great. I'm actually going to get to some of my questions now quickly. <laughs> um, it's been really good. I've enjoyed meeting you both. Um, so what words of wisdom would you give? Because we're trying to ask the same questions over, over and over again. Um, what words of wisdom would you give to somebody looking to enter this industry? Don't do it. <laughs> Not the only one to say that. No. I, go on, you go. Shall I go? Yeah. I, I mean, from someone that started their career in the industry, I see it as an incredibly vibrant place. Um, the words of wisdom I would give to people is really think about what part of the market you want to work in. I think very, and we, we've been approached by people that want to work in the market, people that are looking for work experience opportunities. You know, the market is so diverse and as tech comes in, there's more emphasis than ever on operations management, on customer experience, on the tech build behind the bank and less about the balance sheet, if you yeah. like, of the business you're lending to. So I think those people need to really, really think about it. I actually think the bigger problem we've got is we are losing talent to other industries and we're use, losing talent that historically would have looked at financial services. So it's got an image problem at the moment. So I'd encourage people to explore which part of financial services they wanted to work in. But I think actually we need an industry solution to get more talent into the business because we are going to lose into different businesses. I think it's really interesting. And for me, you know, there's a couple of things. So. Um, so first of all, I think in terms of you know words of words of wisdom for people, I'm not sure I can necessarily yeah. give them those. But yeah. Yeah. but for me, it's all about learn. It's about being open to ch- you know understand, take time, ask questions, you know be inquisitive. Because the more you can do that, the more you'll pick up, the more you get to learn your trade. You understand what's happening. You go you, you figure out what people are trying to get to. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. And I think that's absolutely key. For me, the thing that I always love about what we do, because we are in the SME space is go and speak to SME business owners. We've all got them. We've all got the family, the friend, the person who's running a business who comes home looking stressed every day. You know, go and ask your, your uncle or aunt, why did they leave that accounting practice and start the ice cream factory? Because when you get into the nuts and bolts of it, it's those businesses that are the ones that we all know. And yeah. they're all, they've all got that reach through it. And we all know those people. Yeah, and, and if you can get that interest and love for, yeah. for business and, and businesses in that way, yeah. Financial services is an attractive place to do because of what you can do for them. Yeah, I think that's really good. I really, really like that. I mean, I always say to people, because I've been in, in lending for a long time, and I always say to people that 
try and try and find out the whole story. So you could write down the building values 500, and the loans 250, and the, this is the rate. And but it'd be interesting to find out who are you, where did you come from, where why did you buy this building well, thought, in the first I'll, place? Absolutely. How enough. much money are you have you put in, and why did you put that money in in the first place? And has that panned out the way yeah. you wanted it to? And I think then you really start to understand the sort of psychology of what's going on here and why people are doing and what their struggles are and what the bits they like and they don't like. If so. you don't ask those questions, you cannot deliver. No, definitely Because you will never not. get to the root cause of what that SME I needs. Agree. And I'd also count, if you don't ask those questions, you're pawnbroker. Yeah. You're taking a legal charge in exchange for a margin. Yeah. And it has to be more important than that. Yeah. And actually, if we told the young people what we do yeah. better as an industry, yeah. I think we'd attract more people in. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. Um, I think you're right. So I guess for you guys, it's quite an interesting question, but what, what would you like to see change in 2020? I think for me... Or what you know, do you think will change? I mean, we could, we could, we could definitely you know, talk about some of the uncertainty that we've got and get that going. For me, I think the, the, the benefit that we've got is that we're in a unique position to be able to support people you know, as, as they go through that uncertainty. One of the benefits of having a, a new business and a new bank like ours is we have to be aware of, of, of all the things that are happening at macro level. But actually, it's a real opportunity for us to see through some of that. We don't have the pressure of people who, you know, maybe need to move a business off the balance sheet or, yeah. you know, need to think about avoiding certain sectors. For us, we can take a different view to it. So for me, it's less about frustrations. It's, you know, we, we've got a lot of work to do for ourselves and in making sure that we're just staying really close to our broker partners, our customers, as we go through that uh, and to see how and see how we can make sure we're supporting them through that I, period. I'd actually say what I'd like to see is back to your point about young talent, some industry work on how we get young younger people back into the industry. Yeah. Uh, that, that for me includes the ongoing conversations that are being led by some superb people in the industry around diversity as yeah. well. Um, I'm proud that our business is playing a real part in that yeah. um, and looks I mean, at all opportunities and, culture and allowing and diversity. people to work remotely is important because why should you stop someone brilliant working for you if they can't come to London every day? It doesn't make any sense at all. But, uh, um, about 60% of our distribution team that's facing off with SMEs, other professionals in the market and, and our broker partners are not based in the office and why should they be? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're the world where um, financial services is becoming more and more regulated by the minute. I mean, it does sort of become interesting to a different type of person than maybe it did uh, when I was looking at the industry some time ago. Yeah. And I think um, there is a sort of boring stigma. Some people, I mean, it's become more popular to talk about money and, um, you know, how to save money. It was always very private, I think. People yeah. never talked about what your salary was or, you know, what your pension was. But now it's become like a lot of taboo subjects. So, yeah, I think more could be done. But I can see different type of talent being attracted to the industry. And I think we need a different type and of talent. Recruiting younger people who don't have um, preconceived ideas of... You know, the regulation is a pain in the arse and it was never like this in my day. I think there's an opportunity um, for people doing studying finance, come straight out of um, university or higher education into a modern technology-backed um, bank and... Um, and learn their trade. Learn their yeah. trade, definitely. I think what might have put off some of these young people, and I, I'm actually certain it has, is if 41% of those have had parents that have been in the industry, mm. mum or dad has worked in that industry. Yeah, they hate in it. In the last 15 years, they've probably had to reapply for their own job 10 times yeah, yeah. you know you can imagine some of those stories around the dinner table yeah, yeah. not necessarily meaning that that individual wants to follow their parents into a very different market now but yeah. perhaps a market that's not very well understood yeah maybe it'll skip a generation mm -hmm. gentlemen I've really enjoyed talking to you I'm going to cut it much. off because pleasure. we're trying to get through as many as we can today uh, but I'd like to carry on talking one day yeah, great pleasure thanks, thanks very much. much cheers cheers pleasure